Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel Irfan CFPS. In today's session, we are going to discuss about the basic fundamentals of standpipe systems along with the hydraulic calculation procedure. So, without knowing the basics, we can't perform the hydraulic calculations. So, we can find about the standpipe systems in NFPA 14. As you already know, NFPA is National Fire Protection Association, which is the authority or the code which provides rules and regulations related to the fire systems. So basically NFPA 14 refers to standpipe systems. So we have three figures here. Before we move ahead, just I want to highlight you about three types of standpipe systems class 1 class 2 and class 3 basically these standpipe systems are nothing but the piping system which is connected to the hoses to supply water through the hoses. So in short if I say that these standpipe systems allows or delivers the water supply for hose connections. We will discuss about standpipe systems in detail when we take NFPA 14 training module. So now in order to perform the calculations we need to know about class 1, class 2 and class 3 systems. So now I will take one more color. In class 1 systems, we have 2 and of inch hose or hoses. In class 2 systems, we have 1 and of inch hose. And in class 3 systems, we will use both 2 and of inch hose and 1 and of inch hose connections. So this is the basic things you need to know and for class 1 systems we need to have 100 psi pressure at the remotest hose and for class 2 systems we need to have about 65 psi at remotest hose. So this is most important we will use in our hydraulic calculations. Apart from that, if you see the figures here, this one you can identify that this will be class 3 system. How we say because here we have one end of inch hose which is connected to the hose rack and also we have two end of inch hose valve. So basically in class 1, 2 or 3 systems you might have these hose racks or only you might have the hose valves itself. So even if you see 2 end of inch hose valve it comes under class 1 system but if you have both 1 end of inch hose and 2 end of inch hose you need to consider this as class 3 systems. So in second figure if you see here this looks like angle valve at the staircases this made this will be two end of inch since it will be installed at staircase area so two end of inch hose wall here we have shown so it will comes under class one system so this one for example if you consider this as class two system then it means it it is nothing but one end of inch hose valve otherwise if you consider this also as class one system then this will be having two end of inch hose valve. So these are the basic things and uh, for performing the hydraulic calculations couple of points also you need to keep in mind I will explain you shortly. So basically see for one end of inch hose you need to have as I said 65 psi and uh, the flow shall be 100 GPM. Fine. 
so for one end of inch hose it can vary from 50 gpm or 100 gpm you can check nfpa 13 related to this particular scenario so because in our today's topic we are going to discuss about two end of inch hose valves so i am going to tell you about this gpm so for two end of inch hose valves at the remotest point or remotest hose valve you need to have 250 gpm so basically when you are installing two end of inch hose valve it means the flow shall be 250 gpm from this particular hose valves so this is the first point and second point we need to consider two remotest hose valves for performing the calculations so for example i am going to consider one riser which has the hose valves maybe this will be 10 floor building these are the remotest this will be the ninth floor you know fire hose valve and this will be the 10th floor fire hose valve for example so we are going to consider these two remotest hose valves for per, for performing the calculations so at these two remotest hose valves we need to have you know 250 gpm plus 250 gpm so our demand will be at the starting point 500 gp M. so this will be our demand requirement what will be the pressure at the initial node or the starting point we need to calculate that will be from the hydraulic calculations so now we know that 250 gpm is the requirement and for two end of inch valves we need to have minimum 100 psi at the remotest hose valves so if we consider Two remotest hose valves it means we will be having 500 gpm requirement and for each hose valve we need to have 100 psi minimum requirement to perform the hydraulic calculations but here there is one more thing I will explain you while I perform the or I do the manual procedure for standpipe systems see you need to understand the concept otherwise we cannot perform the calculations so just i am drawing the network and then i will explain you how to consider the remotest landing valves or hose valves so for example you have 10 floor building and you have installed the landing valves or hose valves we can call so the sizes will be two and a half inch at the staircase areas so now we need to consider two remotest landing valves of two and a half inch as per nfpa 14. so what we need to do basically we need to remember two points first point is related to the flow from each landing valve and second point related to the pressure required at each landing valve so now as i already told in my previous slide for two and a half inch hose valve or landing valve we need to have 250 gpm as per nfpa 14 since we are considering two landing valves for our calculations and basically we need to consider two remotest landing valves only in general if we have only one stand pipe fine so now 250 gpm plus 250 gpm will be 500 gpm so it means our demand required at the starting point will be 500 gpm and now we need to have pressure requirement at this particular landing wall is 100 psi at the remotest landing wall it means we need to calculate the head required in psi or bar at the initial node based on hydraulic calculations 
so hydraulic calculations are performed to know the head or pressure requirement at the starting node so that the water will reach to this particular landing walls and the pressure will be 100 psi so now if you have second stand pipe for example and this also has you know landing walls installed then as per nfpa we need to consider plus 250 gpm along with this two landing walls we need to consider the remotest third landing valve as well so it will be about 750 gpm this is the case which we are going to consider in our calculation so 750 gpm is the requirement and we need to know the pressure required at this particular point starting node so that the water will reach to this landing wall and this landing wall at the required pressure see there is one terminology called horizontal stand pipe so in horizontal stand pipe we will install number of fire hoses or fire hose cabinets or fire hose valves in particular floor in other words we can call like this horizontal stand pipe is connected to two or more hose connections in one particular floor when we have two or more hose connections in a particular floor connected by one stand pipe then we need to consider three two and a half inch hose valves 250 gpm plus 250 plus 250 to perform our calculations if you don't understand this particular concept anyhow i am going to start nfpa 14 training module there i will explain you in detail just for your understanding i told 750 gpm is required if you are using two or more host connections just keep in mind about this because this we this is not our topic for today's hydraulic calculations so one more point related to class 2 system since in class 2 system as i already told one end of inch hose valves are used so for one end of inch hose valves as per nfpa 14 we need to have about 100 gpm and the pressure requirement at remotest hose valve or hose cabinet will be 65 psi so this will be 100 or 50 gpm fine so now what we are going to do we are going to do the hydraulic calculations for standpipe system considering three remotest landing valves which are installed in staircase areas so in next slide we are going to do or we are going to discuss in detail about the hydraulic calculation procedure in order to select the pump capacity and head requirement